watch our recent video on how to turn satin letters into backstitch letters as shown here, a couple of questions were asked such as, why didn't I use the red work tool? Why didn't I branch the entire word? And how would I connect the letters to avoid jumps and trims? I'm Linda Goodall and in this video, I'll answer those questions. In the previous video, I used the invitation font to turn these satin letters into backstitched version for a little quilt project. In TrueView, there doesn't seem to be any difference between this set and the next two. There's just a little bit difference between this one because I have connectors here. Let's turn off TrueView so we can get a better idea of what's going on. I'll press T on the keyboard and now you can see all the jumps and connectors. So this little triangle indicates that this has a trim. This little dotted line means that this is how it's connecting to this next letter. The circle shows the entry point. So exit, entry, exit, entry, and I'm trimming between each one. On this version, which you can see over here, I've used the branching tool on each individual letter. What this does is it lets Hatch add in all the necessary travel stitches based on where the entry and exit points are. These letters are about an inch tall, and the gaps between most of the letters are several millimeters, enough to cause a visible connector, so I chose to trim between the letters. Now this next one, I use the red work tool. And I applied the red work tool to each individual letter. And notice the connectors here. Here I have a short one, here I have a long one. Once again, I have a long one and another long one. The red work tool will apply exactly two passes, works only with outline stitches, and starts and ends at the same point. Generally, we want objects to connect with the shortest possible connections. So although branching may cause an uneven number of passes on an object, it does allow for closest joins. So those are the trade-offs between using the branching tool and the red work tool on this type of letter. Now on this version, which you can see over here on the objects tab of the sequence stalker, it's all one object. And that's because I chose the whole line and applied the branching tool to it. Now it shows connectors between the letters and if you look carefully, you can see that they are solid lines as opposed to dotted lines like we've had before. This means that there is a jump between here. Also notice that I only have the triangle at the end, and that's because I'm, I'm only trimming at the end. So the connectors will show when you stitch, unless they're really long and your machine has automatic trimmers that will trim. But if I go back to TrueView, you can see that it doesn't show the connectors. The final line shows manually digitized runs between each letter to connect them and avoid jumps and trims. Now before we discuss how, let's talk about why. Most home embroiderers like to trim between all letters, even very small ones, but there are really good reasons not to. First of all, whenever there's a trim, there must be tie stitches. You have to have a tie off and a tie in, and those can run up the stitch count when you have a lot of letters. And on really tiny letters, adding ties can double the stitch count of the letter. Secondly, tie-offs can be visible, especially on really thin letters or really small letters. They might be a little blob there. Thirdly, the machine must slow down to trim and then get back up to speed again. Additional stitches and that trim time can add to the stitching time and therefore reduce productivity. If you're a production embroiderer, you don't want to do that. And even if you're not a production embroiderer, you don't want to waste time watching your machine stitch. And fourthly, stitching is less secure near trims. Now when I was learning to digitize in the mid-90s, the only teachers were professional digitizers with years of experience who knew how to create production-friendly designs. And one of the things I learned about lettering was to have them connect with the closest points and use tie-offs and trims only when necessary, generally between words rather than letters, and especially on small letters, you didn't want to have trims between them. Of course, back then we were often digitizing our letters from artwork rather than using built-in closest point alphabets that can automatically adjust for closest point connectors. One way I was taught to help hide a longer connector was to sink the needle between the letters. So you digitize your letter and you come over here and you just click a manual stitch right in, in there, just a single stitch. The logic behind this was, one, to keep the machine stitching and not trimming and tying off, and two, 
to camouflage the connecting jump by making it shorter. Shorter stitches are pulled more tightly into the fabric and are therefore less visible. In software that doesn't have a way to add a single needle point, you can just digitize a straight open line and apply a run stitch. So on this bottom line, and I'm going to zoom in, press B on the keyboard, drag a selection around this. I'll go back out of True View. I've just digitized an outline, which you can see there, and it's an open stitch, which you can see by this star that's not closed, and it's only a couple stitches, and it's between the O and the C. So because I'm working with built-in letters, I've created all my letters first, and then I simply digitize those lines over where Hatch put the connectors, and then I move them into position. Now if you're new and you don't know what that means, let me just delete one and we'll do it. So I'll select it over here in the sequence docker, press delete, and now I have a connection there. I'll go to the digitize toolbox, click on digitize open shape, left click, left click, and enter. And I have a straight run, and now I just need to move it into position. So that's what I did with all the letters. And then what I did afterwards, we'll zoom back out. Actually, we could close a couple dockers here. I selected the entire word and on the object properties tab, guess I needed that docker after all, went to the stitching tab and made sure that I had turned off tie stitches in and out and I had automatic trims turned off. Then I went to the first object, and we want to turn on connectors so that it ties in on that one. We'll leave the rest off, and we'll select the last letter, and we'll put tie off on, and we'll put trim on. So now I'll only have trim at the end and only have tie in at the beginning and a tie off at the end. So this way, I've manually optimized my letters with the help of Hatch. The advantage of working with letters that are object-based is that we can easily control entry and exit points as well as the tie stitches. And because they are objects and I have closest join turned on in Hatch, it will manage a lot of that for me. When you use alphabets that are stitch files, the digitizer has had to add in tie-ins and tie-offs on every letter because there's no way of knowing when it will be required. Also, the entry and exit points are fixed when the letter is exported for the machine format. There's simply no way to plan a stitch file alphabet set to work as close as point with every possible combination. So I hope this has answered some of the questions you've had and gives you more ways to produce creative and professional level lettering. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and please make a comment. Thanks.